Welcome science fiction snobs. Today we're going to talk about Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 3, The Great Defense of Winterfell, and how ungreat that defense is. In fact, it's probably the worst military plan ever in the history of fiction or real life. It's the most horrible plan. It is, it's like they took a really good plan and did the exact opposite of it. The worst plan ever. And I'm going to break it down for you and tell you why. <clears throat> Let's start off with the, well, we'll start at the beginning of the battle. Uh, I'm going to go into some pre-battle stuff as well. But uh, start at the beginning of the battle. So in modern uh, military combat, there are, uh, you know, breaking it down, making it fairly basic, there are three things you want to do in any battle. You want to find the enemy. So first thing is find. That's the reconnaissance stuff. And then fix the enemy. That means like hold them in place. And then strike. Find, fix, and strike. So normally you use, uh, for finding someone, you use all the reconnaissance stuff. Um, in Winterfell here, you could use the dragons. You could use the Dothraki, the horses. Those are the guys who usually do the scouting stuff. Fixing the enemy is usually the infantry's job. Okay, the uh, unsullied and all the guys on the ground carrying uh, pointy sticks and swinging swords. And then strike is usually something that you could do with cavalry. But in modern um, modern military, you know, you strike, you could strike with cavalry. The dragons would be good to strike with. You know, you'd throw in your artillery, which is your uh, catapults that they have firing at uh, the enemy. <clears throat> Once you got them slowed down and they're in one spot, you just hammer them. So those are the f main things in modern military combat that you look for, breaking it down to its most basic level. So let's look at that in uh, and relate that to the Battle of Winterfell. So beginning of the battle, we see everybody all lined up. What do we have? We got the cavalry in front, and then you got a bunch of uh, an, the cavalry, the ca Dothraki, which is the cavalry. Then you've got the artillery behind the Dothraki, which is those catapults, and then you've got the infantry behind them, which is uh, the unsullied and that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do you want to put the infantry in front because they are cheap and inexpensive um, they do all the dying first so they you know the enemy hits them and they get stuck with them and then you start hammering them with artillery and then you use your cavalry you come around the sides and you hit them in the side so while the enemy is looking at the front and worried about the guy going to stick him in the uh, in the face with his uh, pointy stick, he gets hit by, you know, horses moving fast and going through their uh, ranks from the side. So, beginning of the battle, exactly backwards. What does, I don't know who planned this battle, what, what do they do? They take their um, cavalry and they charge forward and run right into the enemy infantry. And they basically get wiped out. They start firing their the, the catapults, which is their artillery, to help support them, so that's a good thing. But you don't hit the enemy head-on with your cavalry normally if you can avoid it. And they and why couldn't they avoid it? You know, it's the first thing they do. They get wiped out. The Dothraki's all dead. I mean, if you were Cersei Lannister, this would be your plan, right? Dothraki, gone. Wasted. I mean, that's what her plan would be. So, I don't know... John Tro Snow is, I don't know what he's smoking. He's smoking that uh, red tree in the back or something, but I don't know how they planned this at all. So the exact opposite, worst of what they should have done. or They should have had the Unsullied up front, the the um, the artillery, the um, catapults behind them, right? So as soon as um, the Dothraki are dead, the bad guys come forward and, I mean, they don't even keep firing the catapults because partially, I guess, because they can't, they don't know where the enemy is. They can't quite see them. But, I mean, they're wasted. They get off a couple shots and then they're destroyed. They're wasted. All that um, artillery. It's expensive to make. Shouldn't waste it like that. So what they should have done, had the Unsullied in, in front, had the uh, the cavalry around to the side somewhere, maybe out of sight, and uh, they have a few horsemen or whatever, or the or the dragons, they find out where the enemy is, they start hammering them with the uh, the catapults. And and then as this whole, you know, loosen them up a little bit, uh, thin out their numbers. So when, And then when they hit the Unsullied, they stay there, and then 
from both sides, the Dothraki come in and cut them up to pieces. All right? That's how the battle should have gone at the beginning. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, pre-battle stuff and air superiority. So, the heroes in this, uh, in this situation have air superiority. They've got two dragons. The bad guys have one dragon. So, why do they wait with their dragons? What should they be doing with their dragons? Dragons are kind of like airplanes. They should be scouting with them. Find out where the enemy is so they know how far they are so they could fire their catapults at them. Or, <clears throat> they use their two dragons to try to take down their one dragon. And hopefully, two to one advantage, you kill their dragon. Their dragons, our dragons are both alive. And then you can, you've got air superiority. You can just burn everybody on the ground with impunity and not have to worry about anyone um, attacking your dragon. Or, they could do one of... Uh, the good guy dragons fight the bad guy dragons and that leaves so it's a one-to-one -one, fairly even uh, that leaves one of your dragons free and they can go and burn uh, everybody on the ground without anybody bothering them so a couple of options that you could do there but you know they don't do that they don't use the dragons to scout they finally bring them in after but you know he could have been using them way before then he could have broken up uh, the enemy's attack all kinds of good stuff after they get, basically, the Dothraki get wiped out, um, their, uh, their, our, all of our artillery is gone. Um, they're fighting on the, um, close to the castle, but in front of the trench with all the big spikes in it that they laid on fire. So, a <clears throat> couple of things here. Number one, uh, Sir Davos, uh, the guy with no fingers, I think he appears to be in charge of the defense of Winterfell. So, a couple of things, Sir Davos, you fail. You're fired for next time. You know, so the first problem they have is they want to light the the, um, the trench with all the spikes in it on fire. So what does he got? He's got these two sticks that he waves up in the air to tell Daenerys that she should come down and light the, the thing on fire with her dragon. Well, a couple problems with that. Number one, I mean, we see the obvious problem. Right? She can't see them because all the wind's blown up. Every military person knows you have at least, at least two signals to do anything. At least two, preferably more, uh, to do anything. Because one signal can fail. And preferably those signals should be different, right? So you wave your, uh, the fire sticks in the air. That's a signal. That's a visual signal. Now you want another signal which will be different. An auditory signal. Well, you're blowing a big horn hitting a big gong, a drum, whistle, I don't care, whatever you want. That should be there. Now, Daenerys doesn't see the, uh, the symbol, the sign. She doesn't uh, do her job and light the thing on fire. Now, luckily, they got the uh, girl in the red there who can light the fire. But it seems like it's totally, um, it's totally random. She, good thing she happens to be there and she can cast her little magic spell and light the thing on fire. I mean, if your plan is to light the dragon on, or use the dragon to light the uh, thing on fire, and that's an important part of your plan, well, what if she had been killed and the dragon had been killed before then? Then what would you do? You'd be screwed. You should always have a second way that you're going to light the thing. Now, you know, they're lucky they had her there, but it didn't seem planned. He should have, you know, he should have had her and say, you're going to stay here, and your job is to light the thing if the dragon doesn't do it. They should have had a bunch of people with a fire going beside it, and they would light it if they had to, that kind of stuff. Okay, Sir Davos, wake up. Uh, you're not going to survive uh, the battle with Cersei Lannister if you don't uh, do your job properly. So, that's the second thing. Oh, one thing I want to mention about him too. Right after when the, uh, when the bad guys get over the, um, their obstacle and they start getting into the uh, castle, um, people are running around, man the walls, man the walls. As soon as everybody comes back and goes into the castle, they should be going to man the walls anyway. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? You think they, the bad guys are just going to stop and then give up? No, I mean, get into the next position. Shouldn't be running around. When they finally get through the, uh, the barricade, uh, the trench with the uh, big pointy sticks in it, and they start climbing the walls, then they start yelling, get on the walls. They should have been on the walls already, way before then. Come on, wake up, Sir Davos. That's another failure of you. Uh, you're fired. <clears throat> now, um, and the last point I want to make is about obstacles. So the trench in front with the pointy sticks on fire, that's an obstacle. The enemy, uh, a wall 
into your castle is an obstacle. The enemy, with enough time, can get over any obstacle. It Obstacles don't stop. They're, it's not a magic force field that uh, keeps people out for forever. So, we always cover obstacles by fire. And in, when I mean fire, I mean some sort of... Uh, it can be fire fire, but I mean all kinds of other things like arrows and sticks and stones and anything that hurts the enemy. So, the smart thing to do would be, you don't light that uh, barrier on fire and then go off and say, ah, oh, we're safe now, no one can get in. No, it's not going to happen. As you see what the bad guy did, he just started throwing his guys on top of the, of the uh, barrier. They put the fire out with their bodies and then people came across. So, what should what should we be doing? We should be having groups of small, perhaps small groups of the unsullied behind the barrier but in front of the wall. And every time that these guys would try to uh, do that, they would go and stick them with their, um, with their spears. Or people on the walls would be directed to fire arrows at the guys trying to throw them their bodies on, on the barrier and put out the fire. Now, eventually, when that when I mean they're going to be successful, it's just a matter of the cost you're going to pay for. They're going to pay for that. But once they are successful, then you have small groups of let's say I don't know twenty of the unsullied, and they would rush off to these uh, places, the holes in the barrier that the uh, bad guys have made, and they would as they try to come over these small areas, you would poke them with your spears, and they would also fire arrows at them, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> They are going to get through the obstacles. You got to cover them by fire. But what did the uh, what did the castle of Winterfell do? They just stood there and watched them. Oh, look, they're getting through. Uh oh, what's going to happen? I mean, they had to know they were going to get through before. Their whole plan was wait till they attack the guys and the uh, try to kill Bran with uh, beside the tree, and then we're going to you know kill the bad guys. So they had to know they were going to get through. So they should have you know been covering these guys and trying to get them. Um, you know, make them pay as large a cost as possible, right? So, these are just some of the uh, mistakes made by, um, by. Oh, you, before we finish off, let's talk a little bit about the defense in the castle. Now, the inside of the castle, things get pretty chaotic. Uh, you know, that's not surprising. These guys are standing by themselves, uh, chopping away at each other. But they should have had other defenses set up in the castle where they would, you know, fall back to certain areas. Okay, they get over this wall, we're going to move back to this and try to move as a group instead of sort of one hero standing by themselves. I mean, it's great for the heroes, right? Because they're really good and they, they survive, but all the poor uh, infantry soldiers, the guy, uh, the peasant with the pitchfork who doesn't really know what he's doing, you know, he, he gets killed pretty easy. So uh, they should have done that and fall back in groups. Um, and just get pushed back as as much as as they get pushed back, they still keep together and you know keep them the bad guys so that they cannot surround them like that. Because usually when you're surrounded, you're doomed. All right, so these are just some of the problems with the uh, the defense of Winterfell in uh, season eight, episode three of Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, D and D, you guys writing this thing, you could have. You know, you got to do a little bit of research before you do these battles. This was like the worst planned battle ever. Um, go watch Lord of the Rings. You can at least see some stuff. Maybe hire that uh, the uh, orc or troll general guy from uh, the Lord of the Rings movies to run your battle for you. I mean, so far, I am not impressed with the heroes of Game of Thrones and their ability to, ra to wage um, war uh, in their realm. Uh, if this is how they're going to fight Cersei Lannister, unless she, uh, her people are completely stupid, uh, they're going to get their uh, butts kicked by the end of this season. All right, so that does it for uh, this episode. So my, I, my assessment is that Cersei Lannister did plan the defense of Winterfell, either purposefully making uh, the good guys lose as much as possible, or you know through sheer incompetence. Uh, but let's hope we see a little bit more, a little bit more realistic battles in the uh, last three episodes, and we know there's a big one coming as well. So, thanks for watching. This is Science Fiction Snob. Like, uh, click on the subscribe, the bell, all that stuff if you want to see more um, of my content. And we'll see you next time. After finishing this video, I was uh, directed to an article uh, in Slate 
written by a, uh, a professor at the uh, at one of the U.S. Army um, uh, a strategist at one of the U.S. Uh, the United States Army War College, where he talks a bit about uh, the battle. It's a pretty good analysis. I'll read it in the uh, description, or I'll leave a link in the description. However, I have to disagree with his um, points about the cavalry. He says, "Oh." They didn't do such a bad job with the cavalry. Uh, they they couldn't do anything else with it anyway. So that what they did was a uh, charging them into the enemy at the very beginning was a good thing. And I got to say, no, I think this is wrong. He's right about the point that uh, the shock and awe of cavalry are not really that useful against uh, the dead an army that isn't going to be shocked into running away uh, however they could have been used a lot better to uh, scout the flanks to attack the flanks in smaller groups just hit the flanks and then uh, pull out those kind of uh, tactics hit and run type tactics and he talks about uh, you know he, he talks about he mentions that because they uh, couldn't see this was probably one of the uh, best reasons to do what they did and I, and I would disagree I, I again I think that yeah it was difficult to see, but there could have been some things that uh, the Westeroses did in order to um, see on the battlefield, such as lighting fires, small fires all over the battlefield, plus the fact that you get your dragons in there and they start burning everything, and now you've got a little bit of light to see by. It's not like you're uh, fighting so much in the dark. So uh, i got to disagree with him here. Most of his other points uh, make some good points um, and to echoes things that I said myself. Um, so yeah, check that out too for more analysis of the, of the Battle of Winterfell.